Hello guys, in this video we will see how to create or set up AWS RDS for MySQL Server 8.0.42. Then we will connect from the DB or MySQL Logbench. Okay, see I have connected to AWS console, then click on services, then click on database, then we have to click on Aurora and RDS or in the search box search for RDS, then click on Aurora and RDS, then click on db instances now click on create database now we have to choose the database creation methods standard create or easy create i am going with standard create then here engine options we have to select mysql once we selected here see the edition it is mysql community edition and see here the filters if you want apply the filters you can apply i don't want to apply any filters then select the engine version that is mysql server version see here mysql 8.0.42 select it if you want to enable extended support you have to select the checkbox i don't want then templates see here we have the three types of templates production dev or test and free type for this demo purpose i am going with free type if you select free type here see here availability and durability see both are grayed out for free type we have only the single az db instance deployment that is only one instance but if you select production see we have these options if you select dev or test also we have those okay so based on requirement you can select okay so then scroll down then settings here we have to provide the db instance identifier name i am giving aws rds mysql 8042 give the name as for your requirement then master username this is the username or you can give your own like my admin or anything i am going with master username as admin and credential management self managed or managed in aws secrets manager i am going to self manage it if you want to auto generate the password you have to select the checkbox i don't want so i want to give the password manually so the password must satisfy these conditions must be printable ascii characters and password cannot con contain these symbols confirm the same then instance configuration see the standard classes and memory optimized classes are not available for this free type if you select production or development we will be able to select these two okay so we have only one option that is burstable classes in this also remaining are grayed out only we have two options db t3 micro and db t4z micro i am going with the db t4 micro then storage see here we can select any one of these these storage types i am going with as general purpose ssd gp2 gp2 and we can give the allocated storage i am giving 30 gigabytes it is up to you the minimum is 20 gigabytes okay okay i am giving 20 then additional storage configuration if you want to enable auto scaling you can select the checkbox if you don't want you can unselect it okay i don't want but it is up to you for production you have to select it and then we have to provide the threshold okay then connectivity i don't want to connect to an ect compute resource okay if you want to connect we have to select the checkbox then network type see here we have the dual stack mode that is ip4 ip6 and both i'm going with ip4 then virtual private cloud that is vpc i don't have any vpcs in this region that's why it is showing create new vpc if there are any vpcs existing in this region it will show in the drop down so it will create the new vpc then db subnet group so here also we don't have anything it will create the new db subnet group then public access select s yes. firewall that is vpc security groups select see here we have the one default security group or if you want to create new one you have to select this one i want to go with the new one default one then availability zone i am going with this us east one b it is up to you rds option i am not going to select security also i am not going to additional configuration see the default port is double three zero six okay for the mysql and database authentication see here we have the password authentication password and iam database authentication password 
and here both authentication. So based on requirement, you can select these options. I'm going with only password authentication. Then monitoring. See, we have only one option is available for the option that we have selected. So database insights standard. Okay. Additional monitoring. If you want to enable enhanced monitoring, you have to select this checkbox. Then you have to select the these parameters. And if you want to export the logs, you have to select these checkboxes. Solo log, query, or audit log, error log, whatever you want, you can select them. Then additional configuration. So if you want to create initial database, then provide the database name. And if you want to enable backup, if you want to enable automated backups, you have to select this checkbox. And see once we selected, we have the options like backup retention part policy from 0 to 35 days. Okay. Then if you want to configure the window, you have to choose the window. If you don't have if you don't have the preference, you have to select this one. And if you want to copy the text to snapshots, you have to select this one. If you want to enable replication, you have to select the replication. Okay, this checkbox to enable replication in another region. Okay, you can select from this list. It is up to you. If you want to enable, you can enable the replication. Encryption remaining, I'm not going to change anything. See the maintenance. If you want to enable auto minor version upgrade, you have to select the checkbox. Okay, then we have to select the maintenance window for this upgradation. Okay, review these settings one more time. If you are okay with all the settings, then just click on this create database. It will create the AWS RDS for the MySQL Server 8.0.42. See, it is creating the database. Okay, I don't want this. Close this one. See, status is creating. Wait until the status to be changed to available or running. Once status changed, then we will connect to the AWS RDS for MySQL 8.0.4 to click on this instance ID. Once status changed, here we will see the endpoint and port number. Okay. So, wait until this information has to populate. See here, status is changed from creating to configuring log exports. Okay, and see here it populated the endpoint and port number. Now, if you want to see the credentials, click on view connection details. See here, this is the master password and this is the master username. If you forgot, just click on copy and open any text editor and paste it. And this is the endpoint. Okay, close this one. Now we will see how to connect to this AWS RDS for MySQL for 8.0.42 from the MySQL Opens. If you want to install MySQL Opens on Windows or Linux operating systems, then search for my YouTube channel how to install them. See here I have installed. Now click on this plus button. Then provide the name. Name can be anything. AWS RDS MySQL. Name can be anything. But here in place of host name, we have to give this endpoint. Just click on this copy button. Then go to the MySQL workbench. Paste here and port number is 3306. Username is admin. See here. Username is admin. Okay, close this one. Go to here. Then provide the password, whatever we have given for this username. Then click on OK. Then click on text connection. This is the way to connect. This may fail. I will show you the error and resolution. See, the problem is we have to configure under this security. Click on the security group. Then click on security group ID. Then click on edit inbound rules. Then click on add rule. Then select the MySQL under type MySQL or Aurora. See so once we selected port, it is selected as 3306. Then source my IP or you can give the IP range. Okay, then click on save rules. Now go to here. Then click on store in vault. Provide the password again. Click on OK, then click on text connection. This time you will be able to connect without any error. Wait a moment, it is connecting. See, we have successfully connected. If you go to users and privileges, see here we have the RDS users. Even if we close this one, at the time of installation, we have created initial database. So, go to schema, see here we have the bank database. Expand it if you want to create table right click and create table Okay, if you want to create users go to this administration tab click on users and privileges 
then we have to click on add account okay until now we have connected mysql by using mysql workbench we can also connect mysql server by using dbr so i have already installed both dbr and mysql workbench so open dbr click on this plus button then select mysql then click on next then in place of server host paste that endpoint whatever is there here just copy it and paste here okay port number double three zero six and we have the database bank then username is admin then provide the password of this user then click on text connection this is the way now if you want to modify the settings of this aws rds instance click on modify then you can reset the password okay or you can change this traditional management or these options we can change i'm not going to change anything okay cancel it and if you want to restart or reboot click on reboot and if you want to delay it permanently you have to select this one and if you want to stop this aws rds instance temporarily you have to select this one i strongly recommend if you are not using delete it and if you want to reduce the costs and stop temporarily okay because charges are based on the usage okay if you want to delete select it and select this i acknowledge and you have to comment this uh, delete me and you have to click on delete this is the way okay so in this video we have seen how to create or set up aws rds instance for mysql server 8.0.42 then we have seen how to connect to from the mysql or dbr okay for more aws tutorials please subscribe my channel thank you